Okay, we're going. How about... Um, Let's get your, my wife out of here. Well... See ya. <laughs> so, how about a lifeguard story? Oh, there... Uh, there were a lot of them. We had uh, it's a residential community. Yeah. But we, you know, we had, remember one... We had uh, one big heavy woman who was going out a little... Not too far, but... She started to get panicky, and we had to go in and rescue her. And as soon as we got her in, she said, I knew we should have gone to church this morning. <laughs> <laughs> and that, then we had a, another one. Uh, I was the na walking a neighboring beach, and I was coming back to headquarters for something, and the, 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 the lifeguard on the beach I was walking on waved to me, and there were two guys in trouble out there. So he ran out, and then I ran out, and we rescued two, uh, uh, not elderly, but heavy middle-aged uh, guys, yeah. Jewish guys who were yeah. staying staying in a bed and breakfast kind of place in Long Beach. And uh, they, the, you know, the ambulance came, he swallowed a little water, but I don't think they took him to the hospital. But they put him up in bed, and then he called, he called us from the beach at lunchtime, and I guess it was lunchtime. Wanted, wanted to come over, wanted us to come over and see him, and he said, he said, how wonderful was it? The other lifeguard was Jewish, a Jewish lifeguard, and an Irishman saved my life, and I want you to know. So they gave me ten, gave us each ten bucks, and then said, I'm in the, in the coat business, and he gave me a card and said, have your mother or your wife, I wasn't married, your mother or your sister, come on in, and we'll give us a, give her a coat. And they went in last in the winter and got a beautiful fur no trim coat. Yeah, and no kidding. Nice people. Huh. I mean, they were nice people. Huh. But uh, and we had you know every every summer, you'd always have a couple here and there. And right. for, that, we didn't lose anybody. No, nobody died. You know, yeah. it, was, it was fun. Uh huh. Okay. Um, so we were when we left off yesterday, we were talking about some mom sick, and um, you know. I would have imagined that, the, I mean, if there's anything good that can come out of a situation like that, is at least you and her had, uh, we all had, uh, what, nine months to say goodbye. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it was seven months, I think, from diagnosis to death. But, you know, I lived, uh, I slept in the same bed with her every night except for the night before she died. Uh, we had a great doctor. They gave her methadone, which is what they use for, for addicts, and it worked much better than the other drugs she had tried. And she was painless yeah. almost throughout the whole, the whole uh, uh, illness. Uh, she was very religious, and, and uh, I used to read uh, the Gospels to her and letters of Paul, and just kept constantly committing, convincing her that she was going to heaven. Right. And she still only had these doubts, I don't know why. But uh, it was a, it was a, it was a tough time. Susie quit her job in Washington, came up. She was going to get another job, and she spent the last couple of months uh, almost daily with uh, your mother. And we had a nurse uh, who was a nun. Yeah. They were. Uh, the, she was a saint. An order of nuns. Yeah. And she was there. She was there 40, 60 hours a week during the day. When I and I was home on weekends, you know. So, you know, it wasn't very pleasant. But all you, all the children came in at different times and spent some time with her. Yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, it was just a. It was yeah. a so so let's. Uh, so then, um, you started dating. Well, one thing she said oh. I, I should add. Yeah. She told Susie and 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 G Trisha, I guess it was maybe Jean, that your father's going to marry again. He'll find another woman, and. You just make sure you're nice to her, oh. it was, uh, which was kind of a big thing sure. for any wife to do. Right. right. And uh, that's what happened. Uh, yeah. It was lonely. A year and a half, we stayed in the big house. Susie stayed there for a little while, and then she moved up. How about me? You remember me? You were there for a while. Uh, Billy was there, graduated, you know. Uh, Rick had come down occasionally. Jean came down. I don't think she came down after Mom died. But it was a, it was it was a, a time of of adaption. But after a year, year and a half, you, you know, the, the, the sharp pain goes away. We had 
I had seven months to mourn your yeah. mother during sure. the time she was ill, as opposed sure. to uh, people who have a sudden death and they and they really have a shock and it takes a while. So, uh, yeah, I was inclined to, to to get married again because it was lonely, yeah. and I was uh, I had just about retired by then, I guess, right. and uh, I, I did meet a number of people, uh, did some dating. Finally, uh, uh, through uh, Joan Peer, who was an old friend of Mary Lou's, uh, uh, I guess uh, we got got the word of what a nice widow lady who lives up in Summit. Yeah. Did you know the Peers no, before? No, I, I, I knew Norm. And oh, you I knew, know Norm. I knew Joan Peer from the Mammoth Beach Club, but oh, I didn't I see. know her very well. Right. And uh, uh, and she had told talked to uh, my, your mother. Uh, about me, I guess, that he may call, and my mother told her, well, why don't you have a little cocktail party? And she says, oh, she couldn't be bothered, <laughs> Joan Peer. So I just called your mother up and uh, persuaded her to meet me for dinner and have a yeah. drink, and it went, on, went from there. <clears throat> and I guess uh, within a couple of three months, uh, I think we both realized that, you know, it would work, and we didn't want to tell anybody right away because it looked a little looked a little hasty, but I guess it was about a year and a half, maybe 20 months after your mother died, that we got married at, yeah. at uh, uh, Holy Cross in Rumson. Mm -hmm. And um, so Mom moved in, right, and she did some redecorating, in. and... Uh, yeah, she did major redecorating. And um, uh, and you stayed in that in the Ridge Road house for how many more years? Probably a couple of years. I think uh, you know some people advised uh, advised us against her coming her using the same house. Uh, we ignored that, and then I think we, we finally realized um, Mary Lou did that maybe it'd be better to change. So we started looking around. Prices were pretty high. We couldn't find anything in Rumson that looked. Adaptable, and finally this uh, the uh, townhouse. Oh, the townhouse came. Yeah, in yeah. Alderbrook, we put our house up in the market, and uh, it took us a year and a half to two years to sell it because we put it, put the pricing on it at, at the peak, yeah. and if we didn't realize the market was going downhill like it often does, and it took two years to sell it. But, uh, sold it to some nice people, and we moved to Alderbrook. And we loved it. It was really a nicely decorated, net architect uh, kind of condo that had two floors, yeah. three, four yeah. bedrooms, I guess we had, or three and a half, full basement. And uh, Mary Lou decorated it beautifully. And we were quite happy. Yeah. Uh, well, all along, though, soon after Mary Lou and I got married, I'm retired, she's retired. Uh, I convinced her to try Florida. So we came down and made the rounds of all the gated communities, uh, golf communities, yeah. East Coast and West Coast. And the only one she had any interest in was Johns Island because she didn't play golf, uh, but this would be a condo right on the water where her grandchildren could come down and enjoy yeah. it, as yeah. well as ours. And uh, we, we, we rented down there for a month to try it. and. We both liked it and came back the next year, and within about uh, three days after we were back, we bought this condo, mm -hmm. and we've been it been in it ever since. Mm -hmm. And uh, good. Uh, I mean, you you guys are pretty happy down there, aren't you? Uh, yeah, we're very, we're quite happy. You know, we we commuted from New Jersey for the first fifteen years of our married life. Kept the, either in the big house in Ridge Road, or after we moved to Alderbrook. And we'd come down in the spring, and we'd go back in the fall, ship cars up and down, uh, ship boxes of clothes, fill up both cars, and when we ship them up, and, uh, and we come back and have to clean up the condo or the one, one condo or the other when, when we move back in, and uh, it got a little tiresome. Sure. And uh, we finally decided to bite the bullet, and about uh, I guess it's now five or six years. We've been we've been down there full time, yeah. no community. Um, so, uh, so that kind of takes us sort of up to the present, at least to where you're currently living. Um, 
So, uh, sort of taking a different tack for a minute, um, uh, I was thinking about uh, your very successful business career and you know, how you went from the FBI into, into, into corporate life and did very well. Um, you know, you talked a little bit about the ad agency but, uh, or the advertising business, but had you given much thought? I mean, it seems like it, it, your, uh, your business life is, your career has been sort of uh, a lot of uh, happy coincidences. But I mean, what did you want to be? When you were young, did you, I, I know that at one point you were actually thinking about being a dentist, but was there any other aspirations that you, that you had? Uh, any other career ideas that you had when you were younger? I, I really I really did not give a lot of thought uh, about a career. Uh, yeah. When I came out of the Army... It was I more like getting a job. I wanted to get a job, finish school, and uh, my guys that I graduated with all had the same problem. What are you going to we'll go to work? And so I, I didn't have a I didn't have a predilection to, towards any any field. It was anyone that would, you know, get me started in something. Uh, the advertising one, as I mentioned, that, that was that was attractive. And uh, the FBI was a spur of the moment thing. I had it I'd always had a, a slight interest in the FBI because uh, my my cousin or my aunt's uh, relative was an FBI agent. And we'd met him once or twice, heard some of his stories, and I, I always thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah. And when the opportunity came up, I thought it was a it was a golden opportunity to get 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 married, decent play, decent de decent pay, and uh, an interesting career. The one thing I used to be sh shy of was a, an office job, yeah. being in the office forty hours a week, yeah. which is what. My brother Tom was doing at IBM when he graduated right. from, Holy, from Holy Cross. But no, I, and I, I, I'd like to say I'd planned my career step by step, but that's not true. Right. A lot of happenstance happened. And any regrets? I mean, do you ever, I mean, when you were uh, a successful executive, did you ever look at other careers and think, gee, you know, I would have liked to have tried law or been a doctor or um, ever any second thoughts about, about your career? Or? No, I, I don't. Th I don't think so because, uh, fortunately, uh, once I left uh, the FBI, luckily, uh, and without any false modesty, uh, I kept moving up. Yeah. I kept having it. Just I, I you, you get you get a little bored with things uh, at various points in time. I did it after Airtron for a while, I moved to EAI, and it got a little bored there because of the things slowed down, topped off, and I was afraid it would decline, which it has. And then the other moves were just where I knew that I had a if, if I, to get ahead, I had to earn a vice presidency in human resources to move up and achieve, you know, the top position in your in your field. And uh, I was lucky enough to be able to achieve that, and, but at the same time, I didn't feel I was not a I was not a person that was totally committed to human resources. It was a practical move yeah. as a, as an executive, and I was able to branch out from the human resources side to the administrative side, and then finally operations, where right. I ran. Multiple companies, you know, so so it's always it's kept, cha it was challenging. It was challenging. Just kept, kept presenting themselves, yeah. uh, and uh, and you know when uh, it was a little disappointing that uh, it didn't work out at NL, but I enjoyed the career and they were good good to me and I was financially well off there, and uh, I, I kind of lucked out with the Wabash yeah. thing when Bill Boyd got sick. Yeah, you know. Um, so switching from careers to uh, your family, so I mean eight kids. I mean no one has eight kids anymore. I mean so you look look back on having eight kids and, and uh, a family. Um, any any other thoughts about that? It was just uh, it was tumultuous. It was fun. It was it was what? <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and a number of a number of you you children 
has asked, I know Mary Lou. Would why, you do it again? Why? Why did he have eight? Why do they, do they yeah. have eight kids? No one ever asked me that. Yeah. Uh, and basically, the reason was uh, I, we didn't believe in birth control. Yeah. And if you love your wife, and uh, you know, it's it's kind of tough to to. Uh, you can use restraint and rhythm method and all that stuff, and right. we tried some of that. But your mother wasn't very good at that. She was too inclined, <laughs> Apparently. obviously. <laughs> and uh, uh, but you know, she handled it very well, and I was able to, you know, feed them all, right. send them to school, right. and uh, I, you know, I sent seven of you to college, right. and. Uh, Terence uh, to a couple of community scholar colleges and yeah. up in Canada and the, that art system in New York. You know. So you, I mean, you, that must be a source of real pride that you were able to put seven kids and would have put eight kids to yeah. college. Yes, yeah. it was, and also the fact that you all turned out pretty good. You know, I mean, uh, I'm quite proud of my family. Uh, you know, good looking, honest. Good sense of values, uh, you know. I wish a number of you wish you'd go to church more often, but you know, that uh, you got to you keep that's something you got to work out with the good Lord yourself. But uh, no, I, I was I'm quite pleased, quite proud. I've heard some many many compliments about my children, and I guess that's probably my greatest accomplishment, thanks yeah. to your mother, me. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, okay. Let's see. Um, any, you know, as you're getting older in, in life, anything that you wish you had done, any place you wish you had gone, any, I mean, not necessarily regrets, but, um, you know, you ever, I mean, living on the West Coast or uh, becoming, you know, I don't know, you were, I guess you took up golf at a relatively easy early age. I mean, anything else that you wish you had done? Uh, Done that I yeah. hadn't done. Do you, you ever find? I mean, I know once you talk, you you talked about possibly uh, writing a novel, a spy novel. Yeah, yeah, I did, uh, but I uh, I didn't know a damn thing about it. You know, I thought I had. I bought a typewriter. I bought you did reams of paper. I didn't know that. Yeah, you never told us that. Yeah. I did you have a plot line? No, no. Yeah, I used to think about it. I, I I told you about you know you're creative, and I used to think I was. And I like I like to read, and I still do. And uh, you know, histories, travelogues, good fiction. Uh, but no, I never did it. Never. Yeah. And I don't. I, you know, I think back. Well, I, I didn't like the commuting part in New York City. I didn't like the weather. You know, six months of the year you yeah. couldn't do much outside. Right. I you thought well, there were uh, there were opportunities to move to places like the West Coast. Yeah. But then, Hi. Come on in. You can come in. It's okay. Uh, but we didn't. We, you know. We've got about 10 or 15 minutes left. All right, move on. All right. Uh, but no, I, 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 I'm not a very, uh, uh, what's the word? Contemplative or? Con con contemplative, yeah. Contemplative. Uh, I live for the moment. Yeah. Uh, I You're don't expect? think I really have any. I'm surprised I've lived to this age. I figured I'd never make the end we of the century. Yeah, <laughs> I would think so. No. And I, uh, you know, I've, I've kept myself in pretty good shape and good health, thanks to good yeah. wives. And uh, so yeah. it's, I'm glad that I'm able to have the quality of life uh, that I've had over the years sure. and uh, enjoy the sports that I enjoy, golf and tennis. Yeah. And, uh, being a Yankee fan now and Dodger fan formerly, right. but uh, no, I, I I don't say I can't say I wish I had done something differently. You, um, you think luck has played a large portion in your life, or I mean, it, I mean it seems like for, you know, from my vantage point, things have gone pretty well for you your whole life. I mean, I, I don't see I. I was there for a, a, a bit of it, and I don't see a lot of hardship. I mean, it, it just seemed. Seem like you know you things mostly went your way. Uh, a lot of it hard work, a lot of it uh, luck, or a bit of both. Or yeah, I th I think that's true. A lot of it has been fortunate. Uh, I think the ability to uh, uh, 
the ability to know and understand people in the management side uh, was sort of inbred in me somehow. Yeah, innate. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm not a he health fellow well met. I probably would not make a great salesman uh, as you would, as you do, you know. Uh, but I think I, I, I tend to know what people, what makes people tick to, to a great degree. Uh, I knew how to operate a, a work unit. I knew how to manage my boss, which is key. Yeah. Uh, you know, you want to get, you want to make sure his objectives are taken care of, and and I've done that, I've done that well. And some of it's luck, some of it's application of prior experience, and uh, and uh, the breaks. The, you know, the, this country is a great country, mm -hmm. and it's certainly been economically growing since in my business career. It's yeah. been kept going up. A few nicks here and there, a few recessions, but uh, it's... Uh... Um, how about, um, let's see, uh, how about, uh, tell us, well, well, let's talk politics for a second. Uh, so, you, Republican your whole life? And your parents were also Republican, or...? Uh, I think they were independents. Yeah, they were independent. No okay. I think they were. I don't know specifically. If That's they pretty were progressive of them, right? Yeah. Uh, you never had any interest in politics, right? No, no. I registered as Republican, I guess, most of the time, primarily because that you'd hope there's more some measure of fiscal responsibility on right. their part. Yeah. It used to be their hallmark. It sure isn't anymore. You no, know, uh, you did. You almost had an opportunity, or you were. You, they asked. Reagan and Nixon both asked about you serving in their in, in their cabinets, there, right? Yeah, well, it was a it was a recruiter for Nixon, uh, and he they were looking to fill uh, under secretary under secretary of labor, and uh, they asked me to come down and interview for it, and uh, I checked it out, you know, the perks and what the pay would be, and, and looked around with the, my requirements, and. Uh, uh, even though it sounded like a great opportunity, you know, it was Nixon, it was probably late in his career, and uh, it did involve more moving. Uh, and even though I thought I would, you know, it would, have been, it would have been proud to be that kind of a position in the federal government, I finally turned it down. Yeah. Primarily, primarily. Primarily for financial reasons. Right. I guess. And Reagan did it? Did, did, no, no, I don't think it was Reagan. No, okay. No, no, never. Just Nixon. Okay. Um, uh, so how about something we don't know about you? I mean, is there something that uh, that um, I, I don't know? I, I found out the other day that you're cooking now. I don't cooking. I mean, yeah, I know. Remember, you used to cook breakfast on Sunday mornings, which was uh, pretty neat that you gave mom a day off, but. Um, maybe maybe it's a love of cooking that we didn't know, or I, I don't know, anything? No, not really. I, uh, I, I know my way around the kitchen just by osmosis. Yeah. And then when I was a bachelor for a year and a half or so after your mother died, uh, you know, I'd cook for those, those people who were there. You were there for a while. Yeah. Billy was there for a while. Uh, Susie. But that was mostly simple stuff. Grilled chicken outside, steaks. Right. And I knew how to mash potatoes and do that sort of thing. Now I, I never fancied myself a cook, and, uh, and it's not a it's not a hobby with me now. Mary Lou's a good cook, so there wasn't room for two of us in the kitchen. Right. Um, grandkids. Um, so I I I know that uh, the grandkids have really been a lot of fun for you. The, you know, the old bumper sticker is, if I knew having grandkids was going to be this much fun, I would have had them first. <laughs> um, anything, uh, I, I mean,